Well, how's it going, everybody? And welcome to Your Healthy Financial Future. My name is David. I am your host. Today, we're going to talk about the 10 financial things that expecting dads need to do. And I've been in this situation. I know exactly how it feels. So if you are currently there right now, you are not alone. If you follow these 10 things, you're going to really set up your family for greatness and success. And so stay tuned and check this video out. When you're about to be a dad, there is a sense of, oh my gosh, I've got to play catch up on so many things that I haven't done. There is a financial aspect to it. There's a psychological and emotional aspect to it. Your whole world is literally about to change. You're going to have a kid and you're going to be putting all of your energy and your attention and your efforts into making sure that your wife and your kid have what they need so they can thrive and it stops being about the golf game or the buddies or the weekends out or anything like that and it starts being about a family unit. Getting a will is at the top of your list. You need to do that immediately and get a will, get a power of attorney and get a um, get, get a living will as well. And there are there are, you know, websites online that can, you know, walk you through that. I think I used Mama Bear forms and paid a little over $100 and they gave me everything that I needed. Every state has, you know, a little bit of different requirements and so you might want to look at what your state requires, but in my state of South Carolina, all I had to do was print out the forms, sign them at the bank and and, you know, have the bank notarize it there kind of, you know, right in front of me and then my will was valid and it still sits in my safe and we review it once a year to make sure it's still accurate. But it, it addresses important things like where do my assets go? If anything happens to both of us, where does the child go? Who is my personal representative? You know, who, who can act on my behalf if I'm incapacitated? All of those things need to be addressed and in that will so you and your family can rest easy because if something happened to you and that wasn't in place, it's gonna be really, really bad. There's gonna be a lot of red tape that your family's gonna have to deal with and you do not want to put them in that situation. They're already grieving because you're gone or they're already just absolutely distraught because they don't know if you're gonna wake up or not. Don't do that to them. Have some clear directive on where, where what you want and where you're headed. Make sure that you take care of your family in this way. It's super important. The next thing that you're gonna wanna go research is all your insurance. Specifically, start with health, life, auto, and disability. Those four are gonna be ones that every household needs and you need to make sure that you have an adequate amount of it. Let's start with life insurance. Life insurance is one of those things where a lot of people just don't have enough of it. They have a $150,000, $300,000 policy, whatever, and that's just not really enough. Uh, I recommend that you have 10X to 15X of whatever your salary is. So if you make 100,000 uh, a year, you're gonna have a million to a million five policy. And that is going to ensure that your wife, if anything happened to you, will really have enough money to be able to pay off any debts you know, put a good emergency fund back, something really, really nice like six figures and, um, and, and, and then invest the rest of the money. And when, you know, times are good and the market's up, she, she makes money. The key is to really replace your salary with, with that life insurance. And so if it's invested properly, I'm not saying that you'll, you'll get 100% back year after year after year, but at least there will be some form of investment out there protecting her long after you're gone. The next insurance that you need to tackle is health insurance. And if you have health insurance, great. You know, just contact your health insurance provider. Ask them if there is anything that you need to do uh, because you're about to have a child. You can also contact your, you know, your local provider. If you've got someone that you, that you work with locally that you can actually go see, that's the best way. So you can sit down with, with, with that professional and say, I'm about to have a kid. Is there anything that I need to do? And they'll go over options with you. Now, if you don't have any health insurance, then you might qualify for something called special enrollment. You can go to healthcare.gov and find out. Um, a lot of times special enrollment is allowed if you get married or you have a baby. 
things like that would, would, would allow you to register for health insurance even when it's not open enrollment. That is something that you will need to investigate yourself or like I said, the best recommended way to do that is to get a professional on your side that will help you with that. It makes things just so much smoother and you can get you know on better plans. I've experienced this firsthand and it's just a blessing. So I would recommend you do that. But make sure that you have adequate health insurance for your family. It's just a thing. Everybody needs it. It protects you and your family against, you know, against tragedy. So get it in place and make sure it's enough to take care of your family. The next one that you want to look at is auto insurance and um, that one everyone everyone pretty much has if they're if they're driving. Uh, but the, the problem with auto insurance I have found is that people tend to go with like the bare minimum of what auto insurance is required and I really don't recommend that. I recommend that you max out that, that auto policy or at least put some extra protection on it and make sure that if you did get into an accident you've got enough of a buffer there. The next one is disability insurance and um, this one is probably one that you don't have if you are, it's the one that most people don't have. Uh, but it's one that I, I, I recommend that you get. Typically the way disability insurance works is you, you know, you have a medical exam, you, you, you know, you get approved and, and, and the policy and the policy is, you know, then, you know, paid for either monthly or annually or, or biannually. And, uh, it will, in some policies, give you up to about 50% of your income should you become incapacitated. And there is kind of a holding or a waiting period like, uh, you know, uh, 90 days or 180 days before the insurance will kick in. So that's something to consider. But you need it there because if you are providing for your family and something were to happen to you, you need to have a way to pay for your bills. And this may be the only thing that you have. And so it's really really important that it's in place it's not going to be super cheap but it's not going to be super expensive either and so i would just consider uh doing that i think i got a quote for 70 dollars a month or something like that for for uh, uh long-term disability insurance and i am uh i am 42 years old so uh it it depends on your age and your health and your know, family history and all of that stuff so uh, you know my my quote may not be anything like the one that you get you may get a better one or a worse one but it is something that needs to be in place the next one that you might want to check out is umbrella insurance i won't dive into this too deeply here but uh, it's basically for people that have a higher net worth you may want to explore that and see if that is an option for you it's not super expensive to get it uh, it's about 12 to 15 bucks a month and it gives you peace of mind if you have a higher net worth. If you don't have a higher net worth, then I would just, you know, hold on that for a while. But as your wealth grows in the future, it may be something that you want to consider. The next thing that you need to do is you need to get your family on a budget, a monthly budget. You need to be very, very purposeful about this because you need to tell every single penny where to go, what to do, and how it's being spent. So you can be a lot more efficient with your finances. You'd be surprised how many families don't use a budget properly. They'll make one, but they may not follow it. And you need to not only make it, but follow it. Stay with it. Make sure that you're updating it periodically. Make sure that every single red cent that you're making every single month has an assignment, a task, a duty, and a job. By doing that, you're going to be a lot more financially responsible. It's going to open your eyes to how you're spending money, where you're spending too much money, and that's only going to help your family because every penny that you save helps your family in the future, whether it goes into a sinking fund or it goes into investments or you even use it as a form of giving. All of those things really do help your family. So it's something that you need to explore. The next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, create an emergency fund for your family. Um, and if you have one already, great, you may want to consider adding to it because now you're going to have a child. Uh, but it's super important that you have it in place. I would say it's more important than actually paying off consumer debt uh, because it is the thing that will keep all the chaos away from you as you're hit with medical bills from the hospital after your kid's born and fill in the gaps, the HVAC goes out, the car needs tires, you know, all of those things that, that, that hit you that might be a surprise. 
you've, you've protected yourself and you've covered yourself because of that emergency fund, you should start now and get yourself into an emergency fund that will protect you and your family for years and years and years to come. And if you ever have to dip into it, you need to, you need to work hard to make sure that that money is put back because it will give you peace, but if you don't have it, it will bring chaos. The next thing that you need to do is you need to get yourself out of consumer debt. And that's basically credit cards, student loans, car notes, personal loans, taxes, medical debt, you know, things like that. It's not a mortgage payment. Um, you know, mortgages are, are just, you know, a fact of life. There aren't a lot of people that have an extra 300 grand or 400 grand sitting around to buy a house. So we have mortgages and we're paying on an appreciating asset there. Whereas with consumer debt, all we're doing is we're, we're basically just making the banks wealthier. And so it's, it's an active process to do this and it's a lot of sacrifice and it doesn't take three months. It's gonna take you know a year and a half, two years if you're actively, aggressively hitting it. Uh, but it's something that you could start now while, you know, while you're waiting on your child to be born. And imagine if you could knock out two or three credit cards before he or she is born. You could put that money towards diapers or formula, or heck, you could even start a college fund for them. Getting debt out of your life, especially higher interest debt, is gonna be something that will give you peace, it will, it will allow you to be a better head of household, and it will allow you to think clearly because when you are hit with a bunch of stress and and financial stress is what you're going to experience the most of as head of household you want to limit your risk as much as possible limiting your risk by cutting out as much consumer debt as humanly possible is a great way to start it also means that you're not going out and buying the $60,000 Tahoe when the kid is born. You're gonna go find a people carrier that you could pay cash for. And I really do recommend that. My family, we don't have any credit card debt and we don't have any car notes or student loans. We just, we paid all of those off and, and, they're, and, and, they're, and they're gone, they're out of our lives. And we, we did that so we could have the peace and a little bit more room to breathe. The next thing that you need to do kind of dovetails into the previous ones that we discussed, and that is just work on getting all of your expenses cut down as much as humanly possible. And you can use your budget to start with that, uh, but you're gonna what you're gonna do is you're gonna find yourself in a situation where you've got all of these extra expenses, money's going out that you could be saving, you could be investing, Get those out of your hair now by looking at your budget and saying, oh my gosh, you know, we spent $343 at restaurants last month. That's just kind of silly when we could cook at home or we're spending $110 a month on subscriptions. That's kind of crazy. We don't need to be doing that. Get that out of your life. And so that money, once you've, once you've cut those subscriptions and you've stopped eating out, you've changed your lifestyle a bit, that's money that you could put towards an emergency fund, you could put towards debt, you could put towards saving and investing. There are a lot of things that you could do that would make your family's life so much better by trimming some of those expenses. The next point deals really with making sure that you've got good men around you. Specifically, you wanna go after mentors. You wanna have some good mentors in your corner all through the process. And these are men that you would want to be like 15 or 20 years from now. I have a few of those and I cannot tell you how much they helped shape me as a dad, as a husband. They, they showed me the way, really. They said, all right, we did this and it really worked, but I did this and this with my kid and I really regret doing it. I wish I hadn't. And what that helped me do is it helped me skip a lot of those things that might later cause me some regret. But they were also people that when I was in trouble or when I wasn't sure what to do, I could pick up the phone and say, hey, what do I do here? And they would know because they'd already experienced it. It was something that was not new to them. You need people like that in your life. If you don't have anybody like that and you're kind of trying to fly solo, life is a lot harder. So find a good mentor or two or three that you can go out to lunch with, that you can go have coffee with, that you can go have a Bible study with, whatever it is, go do that because those people are going to make a huge difference in not only your life, but the life of your family as well. The next one is a tough one. The next one is get your mind right. And I can tell you that before my daughter was born, I didn't have my mind right. 
I focused so much on the money. I was like, I just gotta make sure I've got enough money and you know, I've got insurance and I got all this and I did all of that beautifully. But what I didn't do is I didn't psychologically prepare. I didn't reach out to mentors. I didn't really prepare myself for what it was gonna be like when a kid came into the world. And when that happened, my wife immediately just latched onto our daughter and I was kind of cast out in the cold. That's how it felt because I didn't mentally prepare myself for what my role and my responsibilities actually were. You're serving your family the minute that child is born. And it's, it's a serving capacity that you have never experienced before. And it's something where you have to be selfless. You have to be willing to put your needs aside and love on your family and not, not think about what was lost. In my case, it took me two months to get over the quote unquote death of the relationship I had with my wife. That relationship died when our child was born and it's never been the same ever since. Now, does that mean that I don't love my wife? Of course I do. Does that mean my wife doesn't love me? Of course she loves me. But our relationship is different now because we have a little one and that is how it's gonna be for you. There's gonna be a lot less time to go out golfing or be with your buddies or or the freedom to be able to go, do and go as you please. Those, are, those days are gone too, but there is a mental aspect to this that you need to wrap your head around before your kid is born because if you don't, you're going to absolutely despise being a dad. It's possible. Like I said, it took me about two months to get over it, and but once, once I did and I realized, okay, this is my role and this is my position and I'm okay with that, then everything just fell in line. But for the first eight weeks, my life was pretty awful, or at least I, I thought it was. Actually, it was pretty darn beautiful. I had a little girl, I had a beautiful wife, we, we had started a family, and I missed all of that because I wasn't mentally prepared and it's the biggest regret of my entire life. The next two steps need to happen after you get out of consumer debt and maybe after your child is born. The first thing that you need to do is you need to start a college fund for your kid. Now this is a long-term play because what you're essentially doing is you're setting them up for the optimal amount of wealth that they could possibly get in their lifetime. By giving them their 20s to actually invest money rather than paying back student loans, you're giving them the opportunity to possibly have 10, 15, 20 million dollars when they're ready to retire in their 60s. That's a beautiful thing. Do this now, set aside three or four, five hundred dollars a month, invest it wisely, and by the time your kid is 18 years old, you have college covered and they don't have to think about it. You can use this as an opportunity to teach financial literacy. There are lots of ways you can do it. You don't necessarily want a spoiled kid. You want to show them the value of money, but just because you know their college is paid for doesn't mean that they can't learn the value of money. So save for your kid's future. The next thing that you need to do is you need to start saving for sinking funds. Sinking funds are things that are a little expensive, but um, but and you're not going to be able to buy them, let's say, in a month. But you're you're saving for it, and you know you need to purchase it. A good example would be like a roof or an HVAC or a new car. We set up four or five different sinking funds in our bank account, and we just moved you know X amount of dollars into it until we had satisfied the amount of money that we needed. A good example of that was our family car. We bought a, a Lexus RX 350 a while back and I really wanted my wife in something safe. I never, ever, ever wanted a car payment again, so it took us years to actually save for it. But once we actually did it, we could pull the money out of the bank account, buy the car, and it felt so weird writing that check because it felt like, okay, I can actually do this. That's the beauty of sinking funds. You just, little bit, you know, easy does it as you go, month after month, put money into it, and you will find yourself in a lot better place financially and that's something that's gonna help you, it's gonna help your wife, it's gonna help your kids, it's gonna make your entire family function better because you're not saddled with debt, which means that you're not as stressed, which means that you can be more present, which means you can be there for them and love on them and not have to worry about how in the heck are we gonna pay for this. Being a dad is probably one of the most beautiful things that you will ever do in your life. When I look at it, it's the, the only thing that is equally as beautiful is the fact that I have an amazing wife and I love her. 
And so um, my family is everything to me. And if you're watching this video, then most likely they're gonna be everything to you too. Do these steps, get these things in, you know, right in your life. And I can promise you that your family life will thrive because of it. The biggest cause of divorce is money problems, okay? So if, you're, if you can look at it through that lens and know that you are taking responsible steps to make sure that your family's covered and they're safe, you can cut out the thing that causes divorce the most and it means that you have a stronger chance of staying together. It's a beautiful thing. So that's where I'm gonna leave you today. If you liked what you saw here, please like and subscribe. We are a new channel and it really does help with the algorithm. We really do enjoy making videos for you all and we hope that you enjoy them too. We look forward to the next one. We'll see you then and have fun.